Hi everyone and welcome back to the Organized Notebook. In this video, we wanted to show you a relatively new feature in Notion called automations. And what automations can do is that it can automate your Notion databases. And in some cases, it can help you save a lot of time when used in certain situations. So we'd like to show you a few use cases and things to consider as you add automations to your own workspaces. So let's get started. The first thing we wanted to mention is that automations can only be created if you have the plus plan upgrade. And if you're interested in this, we'll leave the link in the description for the upgrade. And if you do decide to use it, we may receive a commission at no cost to you and it greatly support us. So let's first start by making a table view database so that we can show you some examples. So let's type slash table and then table view. And we're going to go to plus new database and let's title this automation database just to show you. And now what we're going to do is we're going to show you one use case, which is to use the date property and the status property together. And this is how we see a majority of the people using automations. And we think that this is a really useful way to use it. So let's start by adding a property by clicking the plus sign here. And we're going to add a property called status. And then we need to make a property, which is the date. So once we have the status and date, what we want to do is that if the status of this entry is changed to done, we can put the completed date here. So actually let's call this completed date. So it's even clear completed date. And in order to do that, first we'll go to this lightning bolt sign, which is where you create and view automations. Then next, what we're going to do is click the plus sign here, plus new automation, and we're going to add a trigger. So the trigger is going to be when the status changes in here, and we want it to change it to done. And now it says status set to complete. And then what we want to do is change this completed date to the current time. So if we go to plus add action, now we can go to completed date and put now and create. So now what happens is if let's say we change this to done, it's going to automatically generate the completed date over here like this. So this is a really useful way to use automations because previously you wouldn't be able to accomplish this. You would have had to add the date manually here. So this is super useful. The next way we've seen this being used is also through the status. And this is that when the status changes, it would also change the person who's assigned to this, let's say task database. So if we click here and add a plus sign, we can add either person property, which would work if you have other people in your workspace that you're assigning tasks to. But in our case, we can just add a multi-select so you can just see how you would use it with a person property. So if we just go to multi-select and let's say that we have some options like John, Jack, and Kate who are on our team, then what you could do is if the status becomes in progress, it should immediately be assigned to John. So let's actually go to this Thunderbolt and we can edit this one again. And instead of status set to complete, we can edit this so that it's status in progress. And instead of setting the completed date to now, we, we can delete this and then add an action and let's do multi-select and we set it to John. So now when the stat status becomes in progress, it's going to automatically assign it to John. So if we go here, and we change this to in progress, it should change this to John. So it's working the way we want it to. And the next thing we wanted to show you is that you can also connect this to Slack. So this is when it's really useful for small teams. So let's say that once you do in progress and it goes to John, you wanted to send a Slack message. Well, you could go here and right now we haven't put the integration here, but you could put a new automation here and do add trigger that if the 
multi-select is John set to John, then you could send a Slack notification like this. So these are some options on how you could use this automation. So we'd really recommend this for teams. And if you're using this for kind of group planning, this could be really useful, this Slack feature. And the other thing you can do is if we go here and let's say that we delete this automation is that you can also have it triggered with a checkbox. So let's say that we have a checkbox and the checkbox is for whether or not this is done. And let's say that when it's done, we want this completed date to be adjusted as well. So instead we can name it date done. And when you check it, you want this to change. So let's go to the automation here, plus new automation. And the trigger is going to be the done checkbox. And when it becomes checked, then we want this date done to be now. And then we can create. So now if we click here, it should also update this one like this. So this is also a very useful way to do it. And then now what we wanted to show you is that you can actually combine all of these into one automation. So if we took this automation here and we click here, now if status is set to done, let's say that we want to assign this just to check to Kate. So instead we're going to set it to Kate and we're going to add another here, which is to add the completed date. So we could go to completed and we want it now and we save. So now what happens is if we change this in progress to done, it's going to edit these two fields at the same time like this. So now we can really save time if you use it this way in that these two are automatically changed when you change the status. So previously you would have had to manually change each one, but now you can just switch the status and it changes. Now the next thing we want to show you is that this automation also allows you to add or edit to another database. And we were thinking about what kind of use cases this would be useful for. And in general, we wouldn't necessarily recommend this automation because it could get really messy if you start changing other databases using another database. But if you really wanted to use it, you could type slash table and we can make table view database here as well. And let's call this one automation database two. And we're going to actually pretend that this is a projects database. So this is project one, this is project two, and this is project three. And let's pretend that this one is a task database. So if we had a project database here, and if the status here would have one that's, for example, called in review, and you have a set of tasks that should happen when it goes in review, then we could actually add certain tasks into the automation database, the second one, which would just generate a list of tasks that should go with this project. And for that, we're also going to make a relation property. So the tasks database needs to be related to this database. So actually to make this clear, we're just going to change the name here to projects and we're going to change the name here to tasks. So now if we go to this plus sign here and we're going to add a relation property and we're going to connect it to projects and we're going to also show it on projects just so we have everything here and we're going to add relation. And what's going to happen is when we change the status to in review, it's going to link it to that project and also add the relevant tasks. So let's go to the automation here and we're going to delete this one so we don't get confused. And let's add plus new automation and the trigger is going to be the status. And if it goes in review, then we want certain tasks to appear in the table. So for example, we want to plus add page two and we are going to add it to the tasks and the name will be 
grammar review and we're going to edit the property projects which is the relation to be this page and we want to add more so we're going to add another page to tasks and this time we are going to do final review so these are just examples and then we're going to edit another property which is the projects and we're going to select this page so now let's click create and project 3 is now in review so we're going to change this status and it should generate two new tasks here i know review and grammar review so in this way this could be a good way to use it if you have projects connected to tasks and you know clearly when the status changes that there are certain tasks that's going to be needed in the other database. So this was the use case that we thought of when we realized that you can add database pages to another database outside of here using automations. So those were the use cases for automations in Notion. We hope this was useful for you. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or anything that was confusing about this video. And we hope to see you in the next one.